Hello again. I really hope that you guys found the introduction video very informative and uh, that you guys, uh, you know, just took something away from it. But like I mentioned previously, that I am now going to take you guys through, you know, a few of the examples of the tools that I picked up uh, through the research that I did for you guys and uh, sharing my story in that. The first one is being self-aware. By being self-aware, I think the word is very self-explanatory. But I'm going to, you know, explain how, in the season of my life, how was I self-aware. So, like I shared, I had just lost my grandfather. I'm grieving. I'm not at a good place. I'm in my first year going into second year of varsity. I'm not finding myself around, you know, the type of friends that I wanted to be around. Um, I'm, I'm, I, I'm in a relationship that I'm not happy with. And I remember I just said to myself, Lord, I want to leave this relationship. I don't know how, but I'm going to leave it. And I don't think I'm strong enough to leave it. And so I need your help. Like, honestly, that's all I did. I, I remember I, I had just spoken to him, this guy that I was dating at the time, and I'm sitting in my room upstairs and I'm just thinking, I, God, I need your help. Like, I literally need your help. And I didn't know that I was being self-aware, but honestly, from that moment, I believe that God really orchestrated, you know, people and circumstances and opportunities for me to fully, fully let go. And I can say this because since the day I left that relationship, I have never, ever, ever, and I mean ever, seen this guy. Never. It's powerful because once you've set an intention, there's really so little that can stop you, you know, and the things that could stop you are things that you could even overcome yourself. And that's literally all I did. Like, I just... I wasn't aware that I was being self-aware, but now in retrospect, that's, that's all I did. I just said, God, I need help. And whatever it is that you bring, whatever opportunity you bring for me to be able to overcome this, I will give it my all. I will take it with both hands and I will run. And I remember, and, 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 and that's when I started to see that, you know, there was a lot of pain and there was a lot of trauma that was buried that I was just, you know, I kept suppressing and just thinking, no, I'm going to be fine. No, it's not that bad. You know, um, no, I can excuse it this one time. But once I said, no, enough is enough. This is what I want. Then this is what I'm going to get. And what I did was that I remembered where I come from. That's the one thing that I did. I remembered that I didn't just, I didn't come from Haman's Kral so far, you know, raised by such great, uh, 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 you know, role models who were teachers, who were, they were, they were amazing. My grandparents were amazing in, in, in how they raised us and how they were role models in our community. I didn't come so far, you know, just to let this, you know, destroy me and stop me from reaching my potential. And from that day, I've always carried that with me, that I've come far, man. I've come far in my studies. I've come far to be at the university, you know, to let something like this destroy me. And I'm very grateful that I didn't look back. And I would like to share the second point. The second point is that vulnerability can be a courageous act. How can vulnerability be a courageous act? As I said, it was hard already from the point, this situation, this circumstance that I had found myself in, it was hard because for years, this, you know, unhealthy relationship didn't start being unhealthy from the day I stepped into university. It didn't start, you know, a week or two before. It started when I was in high school already. You know, I knew from the time that I was in high school that I shouldn't be with this guy. You know, I, I, this guy is not going to, you know, he's just not good for me, you know. And also being aware of the fact that 
if my grandfather passes away, this is now me reflecting from high school, if my grandfather passes away, my life would be turned, up, uh, up, turned upside down. And I say that because when I was in grade 11, I remember I suffered severely from anxiety to a point where I was taken out of school and had to be hospitalized for a couple of weeks to be monitored. And only after seeing psychiatrists and therapists did they realize that I'm actually just anxious to lose my grandfather and that's how dear he was to me. This was hard. It was hard for me to accept that I've kind of, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm soon going to regret this if I don't, you know, step into this decision that I want to make and, and materialize this desire that I've prayed to God to help me with. And for me, looking back, being vulnerable at that time, one of the things that I did that that is still courageous um, is that I remember when I was missing my grandfather or even missing um, this guy that I had been dating, all I did, I just prayed. And I prayed with my Bible open. I think even today that Bible, is, it still has some creaked marks on it from the tears that I would cry, just praying that, Lord, no matter what, I don't want to go back. And I didn't exercise my vulnerability in public. I didn't, you know, cry in public or cry in front of people, but in my own, um, you know, secret place with God, I took everything to him and I said, Lord, I need you. I need you. And I believe it was a courageous act because I even prayed and I said, Lord, I want you to bring me friends who are going to propel me into, you know, the person that I, I know I have the potential of becoming. And literally, you know, people started coming. I just started meeting people. And, um, and that was courageous for me, you know, just to step outside of my comfort zone to say, I'm done with this life. I, 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 don't, I don't enjoy it. I don't like it. I don't like myself like this. I want to step into, you know, something new. And whatever it is, Lord, I want you to take me there. So the third point of how, how vulnerability can be a strength is that you need to face your fears. And so I remember these friends that I had just um, uh, met, uh, they were involved in a lot of community projects. They were tutoring in, in, in um, very underprivileged schools and, and communities. And I remembered that I had a passion of speaking since, since from high school. I had joined Toastmasters and I joined Toastmasters again in university and um, or rather uh, um, by the branch nearby our campus. But I put myself out there, you know, um, in as much as I was passionate about uh, pa speaking in public, it's nerve wracking nonetheless. And so I started to find ways that I can exercise my passions and, and you know, step outside of my comfort zones. And we started doing projects and speaking in public and, you know, helping young people with their studies and helping them with, you know, communication skills. And um, this brings me to my fourth point which is seek excellence and not no so yes seek excellence and not perfection and what I mean by that is that you know I could have easily just thought to myself no I need to be at a specific point in time in my life before I can do this or no let me wait for you know for myself to feel like I'm perfect in in, in speaking in public but that time never comes and so what I did I just told myself I'm going to show up and just be myself you know, show up and just give it my all, show up and give it my all. And literally, guys, more and more opportunities started to come, um, you know, and this started to put me, you know, on a public platform that where I now could use my skills, use, you know, my craft in speaking more in public. And I even got more opportunities, um, you know, even bigger projects uh, through that while I was studying, which was really, really incredible for me to learn uh, a lot of work experience that I got also just because I just decided, you know what, I'm just going to go for it. And um, my last point that I would like to share with you guys is be yourself. Literally, everybody is taken. Be yourself. That's all I did. I, I just said, Lord, this, these are my skills. How can I be of use? You know, where can I serve? Obviously not neglecting my studies and not neglecting, you know, the important things that I needed to do to make sure that I passed. But I just showed up and, and, and I was myself and I shared my story with a lot of young people who I honestly just thought I was sharing. And a lot of them came to me with different things that they had learned from my story that I would have never thought. Like I wasn't even trying to, you know, one of them even said that I inspired them you know, to just pursue their dream of becoming um, a pilot just by me sharing that I 
I don't want to ever forget where I come from, you know. So those are almost, you know, kind of opposite ends of, of, um, of a statement, but that just planted a seed in someone, them not forgetting their true passion that they've always wanted to achieve. And so it's just so important for you to just be yourself. So guys, just to recap, the first one is be self-aware. The second one, be courageous. The third one, face your fears. The fourth one, seek excellence. And the fifth one, be yourself. Now in the next video, we're going to debrief all of these points and uh, I'll catch you there.